This is the Heidelberger pregame show and standing here in Ray Skillman Stadium with Coach Eric Moore after the second in a row Thanksgiving alumni practice coach. It's a, a tradition that you started when you got here. Just had our 6-1. What an incredible atmosphere it was seeing all these ex-players going all the way back to people that graduated in 1958. Let's talk about that before the game, the big state game. It's such a special morning to be able to do that. Oh, this is what it's all about. Unfortunately, I think some of them think as alumni they're going to practice, but they actually didn't get to practice. <laughs> but uh, especially the older gentlemen, you know, the, the, the Weesies and the Dukes with so many generations of families that played here, uh, to hear to have our young guys sit in chairs and listen to them talk about uh, the, the old days and how just how small and tiny this football program and community itself was. And, and you know, Westfield's just like that too. That's you right. know, they were a small place. And, for both of these schools to grow like they are and represent each other's community and school and state championships, something awesome. But this has got to be, you know, in, in Florida, we practiced on every Thanksgiving because it was the first round of the playoffs, and that was still fun. But it's nothing like when you practice in Indiana on the playoffs, when you're playing football on Thanksgiving Day, you've accomplished something great. And we have this year for the second year roads back to back Thanksgiving Day practices. Back to back practices and, and going to the state game is incredibly special, but this year, it's been amped up a notch because of all the challenges our entire country's had to go through as it relates to COVID. And I just keep thinking back of all those days you and I would have conversations on the what ifs. What if we don't get a practice? What if we can make a practice? What if we have a game? What if we miss games? And we've been so very fortunate that tomorrow evening at seven o'clock we get a kickoff and we got to play every potential game that was possible for this season. Yeah, it's really gonna happen out there in Trojan land. Uh, but you know, in March 7th, when we met with our team in the SAC and we told them we are the team that could deal with anything that might happen in our country and our community, and it did. And when the total shutdown happened, uh, I put it upon the boys to seek out their own you know, development, and they did that. And eventually, we're going to have to look each other in the face and say, in July, are we ready to go and, 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 do, and, and actually you know, climb to the top and, and win? And the, and the kids did that. Congratulations to the parents and this community for supporting our team and the players especially for making it you know, 13 straight weeks in a row winning with the number one title to your back from preseason on. I was answering questions about this team in June and we hadn't even met yet. And then in July, and then, you know, it starts in August. So uh, incredible pressure, but it's a joy. Uh, it's always something that's fun to do. Just put it on the list of, okay, we did that. We've, we went start to finish and that was our theme for the year. And we did that. We started number one and we finished the season number one. Now it's time to finish the real game, the state championship. Turning our focus to Westfield, they're a very electrifying offense. They put up a tremendous amount of points. Their quarterback is is a big kid. He, he, he's got great size. Uh, they like to sling it around a lot. A um, lot of formations. Uh, it's going to challenge our defense. They've been up to the task this year, but talk a little bit about Westfield. Well, first I'm going to mention, uh, appreciate everybody that got over to the semi-state last year. When you go to the state championship, the one thing that gets totally forgotten about is a semi-state championship. That's true. That's <laughs> and true. if you don't win that, you go home and you feel like crap this week and you're sitting around today not wanting to be at Thanksgiving because you wanted to be at practice like we were. But, <laughs> so I got to congratulate Ben Davis having a great year, a great comeback in the playoffs. But I really got to congratulate our fans that showed up over there in a great number uh, and our kids that came out. And, and again, we, we tried everything we could to get that slow roller started and we just didn't start well. <clears throat> but at halftime, we readjusted and we changed our attitude a little bit, and we came out and played a great second half, a great third quarter, maybe the best third quarter in the history of football at the Center Grove, honestly, to score that many points, and, and but the defense to hit like they did and to cause turnovers. So now we have to shift. On our way home, we celebrated for about two days on, on, on liking ourselves on Friday night and Saturday, and then Sunday morning at 8.30, you're back at, at now you go to the next week, and you know it's 15 straight weeks for the coaches working on film and, and, and working on an opponent. And I got I to gotta take my hat off and really appreciate and thank my coaches that have worked so hard. It's seven days a week, you know, and there's not much pay in this. And if you look at what we've accomplished in 20 years, <clears throat> if when, you, when you win four playoff games every two years, that's another whole season's worth of games. So our coaching staff has worked about 10 extra free seasons for free. And I don't think people realize that. It's easy if you lose in the first round. You hang the helmets up and you go home. But these guys have stayed another five weeks uh, yeah, the pride in us wants when we want to do this, and that's what we do it for. And we got great kids, we got great families, and that's what we pursue. But uh, now let's change, you know, another direction and go back to Westfield. Westfield is a great and quality opponent for the state championship. I think Westfield and Center Grove are a lot alike. Uh, will they sling it around tomorrow night? Probably will because 
when we play defense, it looks like that's what you should do, or by just by simply the way we align. Uh, but I do think that they're going to spread the field out and run their quarterback more than we've seen. Uh, he's a, a big smasher. He's like Carson Steele at quarterback, you know, running the football. But he does have a great arm and throws it well. And we got to maintain him, not let him get big plays, and, and be physical with him. You know, has he run it 25 times and got tackled by our guys? I don't know. On the other side of the ball, we go to Carson Steele and the fullback, you know, or the one back. That's going to be a big thing. Can Carson be physical with these guys and can we run? And run our run offense, and then that, which opens up our sweeps and our jets and everything else, and got some really fun special things planned. And then it helps our passing game. So far this season, our pass has set up our run. Friday night, the run might set up the pass for the first time this season, maybe. And uh, our kicking game and our specialty has got to really be good as well. I think that's something that we have excelled in this year, and we've had a lot of turnovers and big plays. Westfield has as well. That's why I say there's a lot of identical to us. Westfield's defense is very good up front. Their linebackers are solid. Their secondary tackles well. I sort of compare them to a Carmel. They pretty much they have an excellent coaching staff. It does a great job. The kids are never out of a place, and they don't make mistakes. And both of our teams are tough and physical, and we don't usually make mistakes. So that's going to be the difference in the game. It's going to be exciting. We can't wait to watch it. Uh, for all those that are watching this, uh, and remember Gate 10 there off of uh, McCarty Street. Uh, that's where we're going to be tailgating. A lot of Trojan fans will be there. Buses will probably leave here around 4.30 tentatively. And uh, make sure we line those streets there uh, as they enter Lucas Oil. So be there at Gate 10 if you can. Probably get there no later than 4 o'clock so we can be ready to root them on. Uh, we've started this season with, with trivia questions to help the craft fair and, and there's lots of prizes to get out there. This is the last question. We'll announce the winner tomorrow. Um, Going to be a softball. We, we've, we've given you guys a lot of difficult questions. This one's pretty easy. The last Trojan football team to go undefeated in the regular season. That means undefeated Mick. That means undefeated in the non uh, conference schedule. That means going through the entire playoffs and culminating in a state championship. What year did that take place? Was it A, 2016, B, 2008, C, 2000, or D, 2015? That should be an easy one for you. This team's going to try to be the second one to do it. Uh, Coach, we wish you all the luck. We appreciate everything you've done. Hey, bonus question. Is this a microphone or is this a vaping machine? Uh, you can write in on that as well. <laughs> That's just to let you know, as COVID has gone, 2020 has been the explanation. Somehow our microphone was just disappeared and we've manufactured this. It's not a vape. Okay. <laughs> Pass the vapor here. We'll finish up here. Hey, everybody that can get to the game and all the pod setting and all the lines and temperature taken, it's going to be all over once you get inside that stadium. You don't think it's you can we can hear you. Our kids can hear everything that goes on in there, even though they don't whatever the crowd number is. Be there in spirit, be there with your heart. But understand this: this team is a special team, and this weekend's a special weekend, and it starts Friday night. Go Trojans, beat Westfield.